Hi. We're going to try to do this lesson uh, by uh, through the video. You all should have your uh, printouts, so please follow the printouts uh, and my lesson just like we normally would do in a classroom. Today we're going to talk about section 1.6, which deals with the relations. Uh, in order to talk about relations, they are connected to graphing. So first, let's review some basic things about graphing that you probably should know already, uh, such as parts of the coordinate plane. This thing right here is called a coordinate plane. That's where you graph your functions or your lines. Um, the coordinate plane consists of four quadrants. Each square here is called a quadrant. This is quadrant one, quadrant two, quadrant three, and quadrant four. Uh, notice that in the quadrant one, the x and the y coordinate are both positive. In quadrant two, the x coordinate is negative and the y coordinate is positive, and so on. So this is our x coordinate, this is our y coordinate. This point right here is called the origin, and it's point zero, zero, where x and y uh, coordinates are both zero. Uh, if we have a point with coordinates 5, negative 2, that means we go 5 units on the x. So from 0 we go 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And 2 units, negative 2 units on the y. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2. That's point P right here. And this is called, and the way it's written, is called an ordered pair. Because they are in order, x and y and the pair means there are two points. So let's practice naming the coordinates and writing them as points. So for example, we have these four points right here. Point A. Point A is this one right here. So it we go two times uh, on the x, so this is positive two. And one, two, three on the y, so the x coordinate is 2, the y coordinate is 3. As an ordered pair, we always put x first, so 2 comma 3, and this point A is in this first square, so this is first quadrant. Point B is this point right here. We're going 3 times to the left, so it's going to be negative 3 on the x. We're going one, uh, 1 unit up, so one unit on the y, which is 1, as an ordered pair, it's 3 to negative 3, 1. And this is uh, quadrant 2, because the 1, 2. Uh, point C is right here. This point is on the y-axis. This is called y-axis. So uh, we don't go neither to the left nor to the right on the x. So the x coordinate is actually 0, but the y coordinate is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And since we're going down, this is negative 5. And uh, 4, negative 5 on the y coordinate, and the point is negative, uh, 0, negative 5. Now since the point is on the, x, uh, on the y axis, we can say that this is quadrant 3 and 4. Or we can also just say that it's on the y-axis. Finally, point D, this point right here. We're going one unit to the right, which means x-coordinate is 1. We're going 1, 2, 3 units down, which means y-coordinate is negative 3. So it's 1, negative 3. And this is the fourth quadrant. Now we want to know what the coordinate plane is and uh, uh, how to write, uh, how to plot the points in the coordinate plane and how to read the coordinates. We need to talk about something called the relations. A relation is uh, mapping. And sometimes we call it pairing. Of input and output.
and input would be our x coordinate and uh, output. And output is our y coordinate usually. So relations can be represented in four different ways. The one that we've just seen already is ordered pairs, where you have the x and the y coordinate written as a, a set of points or an ordered pair. Then we can represent the same thing as a table or a t-chart. So we have these three points. We have two. Two is our x and three is our y. Next, one is our x and three is our y. And also four and zero. We can represent this as a graph. That's where you draw the coordinate plane. with the x and the y coordinates and we have point 2, 3, so we'll go 2 on the x and up 3 on the, the y negative 1, 3, negative 1 on the x and up 3 on the y and 4, 0, so 4 on the x and 0 on the y, which means you don't go neither up nor down and finally, we can represent it as mapping, since relation is mapping. And for mapping, we're drawing these two sausage-like ovals. The first one will always be our x, or input. The second one is always going to be output. Which, remember, is uh, our x and y. And we plot the points in these ovals. Now, if the points repeat, we do not repeat them. So 2, negative 1, and 4, in this case, nothing repeats. But here we have 3, 3, and 0, which means we put 3 only once. And then we map. 2 is connected to 3, so we're connecting 2 and 3. Negative 1 is connected to 3, so we're connecting negative 1 and 3. And 4 is connected to 0. It's very important, especially for the next section, to be able to do this correctly, it will uh, come in very handy in our next uh, uh, lesson. Also, this is not on your notes, but I do want you to write this down. Uh, whenever we have a, a input and output, which is x and y coordinates, they also have a third name, which is called domain and range. Also very important. So domain is your x coordinate, range, is uh, your y coordinate. So domain will be all the x values and we're going to put them in this curly brackets. 2, negative 1, and 4. Just x values. Range is only y values. And just like with mapping, we do not repeat them. So this is going to be 3, comma, 0. We do not repeat the, uh, the values even if they repeat as points. So this DIY question, uh, please uh, do this by yourself. Maybe a sub-institute teacher can uh, pause the video while you're doing this question by yourself in your notes. And um, I can uh, write down uh, the answers. Uh, so you're given this relation, which is the set of order pairs. So you can represent it as an X and Y chart, graph, and mapping. Check your answers with the, um, what you have or with what I have on the board. And also, I will write down the domain and range. And once again, remember, domain is the x values. And 
that the range is y values. So please check your work. So this, uh, these are called relations, uh, once again, the connection between x and y values. But uh, there's also something called an inverse relation. And from the properties, uh, you know that inverse means the opposite, or the reciprocal. So some things are, are changed. So the inverse relation, uh, the inverse of any the re uh, relation is obtained by switching the coordinate in each ordered pair. For example, find the inverse of a relation given, then express the relation and its inverse as a mapping. So if this is the relation that we have, 2, 3, 1, 3, 0, 5, negative 3, 5, the inverse basically will be the switched coordinate. So instead of 2, 3, the inverse is 3, 2. Instead of 1, 3, it's going to be 3, 1. Instead of 0, 5, it's going to be 5, 0, and so on. So pretty simple, you just need to switch the coordinate places. Now, if we want to write the, the relation as a mapping, remember mapping means this sausage diagrams. So we have the x and the y coordinate. Remember, do not repeat the coordinates even if they repeat here. So if we're talking about just regular relation, we have x uh, is 2, 1, 0, and negative 3. y is 3. Then another 3 which we don't repeat, 5, and another 5 which we do not repeat. And now we're connecting those. 2 is connected to 3 right here. 1 is connected to 3 also. 0 is connected to 5. Negative 3 is also connected to 5. So that is our mapping for the regular relation. If we want to draw the mapping for the inverse, we're basically using this set. So this is x and y, but in this case, these numbers are our x's, 3 and 5, and these numbers are the y coordinates, 2, 1, 0, negative 3. So notice this, uh, all the numbers have been switched, and then 3 is connected to 2, 3 is connected to 1, 5 is connected to 0, and 5 is connected to negative 3. So this is the mapping of a relation, and this is the mapping of the inverse of that relation. So that's the basic idea behind relations. Well, when we talk about relations, we're talking about um, some kind of situations, uh, and in the future we're going to talk about functions. And for that, we need to discuss what it means to be a dependent and independent variable. So for example, in general, the more candy you buy at the store, the more you will end up paying. That's usually the case. So what depends on what? Is the amount of candy depend on how much money you're spending? Or does the amount of money you're spending depend on how much candy you are buying? And in this case, clearly, the, you decide how much candy you're going to buy. So candy would be our independent variable because let's say you have an unlimited funds, you buy as much candy as you want. But the more candy you buy, the more money you have to pay. So money would be the dependent variable. So for example, if you buy two pieces of candy, you pay $3. If you buy five pieces of candy, you pay uh, $7, and so on. The more candy you buy, the more money you pay. Candy, you decide how much you buy, but the might how much you pay depends on how much candy you buy. Well, when we talk about mathematics, and we talk about variable representations such as x and y, a dependent variable is always going to be the y coordinate. An independent variable will always be the x coordinate. So, because whenever we set up a chart, we always pick x, and uh, depending on that, we get y. So, 
Let's uh, practice identifying dependent and independent variable. Once again, in general, so there are always exceptions to pretty much any rule. In summer, the amount of electricity used rises as the temperature rises, because the hotter it gets, the more air conditioning you're using, and the higher your electric bill is. So which one is dependent and independent variable? Well, dependent variable is clearly the amount of electricity. And independent variable is the temperature. Because the temperature does not depend on anything. The temperature either rises or falls. There is no, uh, you cannot affect it. While the electricity is affected by the temperature. If it gets hotter, you crank up your air conditioning. If it gets colder, you lower it down. And therefore, the amount of electricity you spend is a little bit less. Finally, the last thing that we need to discuss uh, in our uh, lesson is analyzing the graph. I'm sure you've done those in middle school. So let's say you have the graph below represents the speed of a school bus traveling on its uh, morning route. Uh, describe what happens in the graph. Well, the speed is represented by this uh, uh, axis right here. This is time. So at time zero, speed is zero, but then the bus starts to speed up, okay? So, in other words, the bus accelerates. Right here, this is the first thing that happens. Then, notice that the speed, this is not speed zero, there is still kind of a, some kind of a speed, but it's constant, it doesn't change. So that means the bus accelerates and then it goes at a more or less constant speed. So bus travels at a constant speed. And then the speed goes down. So the bus slows down. And then for a while here, the speed is zero, so the bus is stopped. And the reason why the bus is stopped is most likely because it's picking up some children. So, bus is stopped to pick up children. And then, as you notice, the process repeats. So, there are four parts of the graph and every part is described. Uh, on the test, I can either bring, uh, give it to you in this way or you have to write it as a, a paragraph, but basically you have to mention all the points. The bus speeds up, then it just travels at constant speed, then it has to slow down, stop for some time to pick up children, speeds up again, travels, slows down, picks up more children, and so on. So these two graphs, I will let you uh, think about those by yourself, what they mean, uh, and maybe come up with some kind of a situation, what happens in, uh, in both of these situations. And maybe the substitute teacher can pause the video while you're doing that. And we'll just finish up our lesson with uh, choosing the correct graph. Identifying the graph that shows the height of a skydiver before he or she jumps. So which graph would be the correct one? Well, notice that it's before he or she jumps. So the skydiver probably needs to get in the airplane, go up in the skies, maybe fly around a little bit, and then jump out of the airplane. And uh, take your best pick. And my pick is uh, A. So the skydiver gets in the airplane, the airplane goes in the runway and then goes up in the air. Then they find the point where the skydiver is going to jump and then the skydiver jumps. It is also possible to maybe pick this one. Uh, however, that does not include the fact that the skydiver actually uh, goes in the airplane. This assumes that the skydiver is already in the airplane because you already have some kind of a height. So, conclusion 
is on the board, please write this out. I'm about to delete those uh, notes. So what is the uh, an ordered pair? It is the pair of points, such as three five, where you have x and y. What is the relation? It's the mapping or pairing of x and y. So basically, this is an example of a relation. What are the uh, three ways to represent a relation? There's a table or an x and y chart, graph, and mapping. And we have a dependent variable, which is uh, called y. We have an independent variable, which is called x. You do have homework. Your homework I'd like you to do during the class. You probably have another uh, class period to do it. Uh, your substitute teacher should give it to you. It's section 1.6. Uh, so please do your homework in class. That is it. I hope you miss me and I miss you guys too. And uh, hopefully that was more or less understandable. Uh, this should be on the YouTube so you can maybe look at this again. Uh, or maybe your substitute teacher can uh, reply.